it's really important to preserve Australia's performing arts history. Here at Arts Centre Melbourne, the Collections Department manages the Australian Performing Arts Collection. We have over 690,000 objects that document the history of dance, opera, theatre, music and circus. It's a repository of our stories, identity and culture, and we're in a unique position to preserve and showcase this glorious collection nationally and internationally. There are 35 members in the team across four streams. The first one is the curatorial team, and their role is to develop and interpret the collection. The second team is the access team, and their role is to put on exhibitions, make the collection available through our research centre and also online. Then we have our collections management team. Their role is to document and store the collection. Then we have the preservation team and their role is to treat and also long-term preserve the collection for future generations. We've worked with Opera Australia for many years and we were aware that they held the Dame Joan Sutherland collection. Joan Sutherland was born in Sydney and became an international star after her triumphant performance as Lucia de Lemamore at Convent Gardens in 1959. She filled opera houses across Europe and the United States and her career continued until 1990. We'd been wanting to have Joan really well represented in the collection for a long time, but also it was really important to have Opera Australia's pivotal moments represented and captured as well. We started to become aware of the costumes uh, of Joan's that were held at Opera Australia back in that 2000 and six, 2007, working more closely with some of the people from the wardrobe department, particularly Trish Butterworth. We were able to learn more about the costumes and how they were made. Working with Trish was a godsend, really. I mean, we, we couldn't have had the level of information that we have really without working with her. We received a call from Lynn Hill, who was head of the wardrobe department back in um, 2018 and the company actually offered to donate her entire wardrobe to Art Centre Melbourne. We actually weren't sure how many costumes were in the offer at first. No one had actually listed them. I worked with Trish in Sydney to flesh out the details of what was on offer and then came back to Melbourne and did some work with the curatorial team to make sure that we were covering all the levels of significance that we needed to capture in the collection. And by the time we'd finished over multiple trips, um, we'd established that there was over 70 costumes. So the curatorial team and the collections management team had to come together and assess the significance of the costumes based on their rarity, their research and also cultural value. We had to assess the storage footprint of the 70 costumes as well as the ongoing costs for managing them and had to make a decision to only accept 30 out of the 70 costumes. The 30 costumes represent significant performances such as La Triviata, Lucrezia Borgia and Les Huguenots. They also represent significant Australian designers of the time, including Desmond Digby, Christian Fredrickson, Kenneth Rowell and John Truscott. Each costume has multiple parts, which adds up to hundreds of individual objects. We therefore decided to do a focused project, which we estimated would take six months. The aim of the project was to document, to research, to preserve and rehouse these costumes. Because of the volume and the resources required, we needed to do this work at our off-site store at the Public Records Office of Victoria. People often underestimate what it takes to develop, maintain and preserve a state collection. We had conservators, curators, registrars, photographers, project managers and art handlers, all working together to create the best conditions for these costumes to preserve them and slow down the natural rate of deterioration. We've also catalogued the costumes into our database and undertaken publication quality photography and created new and bespoke housing, including custom-made hangers and stillages to house the heavy and complex costumes. These costumes take us back to an exciting time in Australian opera history that Joan shared with her husband, the internationally acclaimed conductor Richard Bonning. We got so many valuable insights from Richard's first-hand accounts of the performances made in these costumes. Once the project is complete, the public will be able to access detailed information, including high-resolution images, through our collections online, but we'll also be planning to use the costume in future exhibitions, as well as creating 3D interactive experiences using virtual reality and augmented reality. We've partnered with Deakin University and Sinclair Dermatology to trial two different methods of 3D scanning of the costumes. 
The first method is photogrammetry, which involves taking hundreds of images of the costume in the round and then stitching them together using specific software. The second method involves using a medical instrument called the Vectra. The Vectra is one of a kind in Australia and it's been designed to scan skin in the dermatology field. So once we have the 3D models, we'll investigate new ways for visitors to experience the costumes. Visitors will be able to zoom right in and see details of stitching, fibres, beads and manufacturing processes. We are so excited to be using medical technologies to document museum objects for the first time. Here at Arts Centre Melbourne, we have the largest performing arts collection in the country. Our role is to bring our collection to the public and by acquiring this collection, we are preserving and sharing the career of one of Australia's leading performers on the world stage. We couldn't be more excited about the Dame Joan Sutherland acquisition.